probably the, the lack of some offensive rhythm has a lot to do with it being the first game. Um, you know, I, I thought uh, I thought Chris did, you know, I, I think he does an outstanding job. And, you know, the adjustments they made in the second half, it's a middle ball screen with, the, you know, one of the best players in the country, throwing back to him and basically baiting our ice coverage in the middle of the floor in order to try to get some more movement and uh, open space for them was, uh, was effective. And uh, we weren't able to counter that. And, we lost some of our uh, defensive tenacity that we had in the first half. Um, as far as, you know, for us, I was really proud of our guys in terms of their coming out in an environment like this in the first game and with a brand new coaching staff and, not, you know, the first time we've really been together in any kind of environment outside of a scrimmage um, and really competed. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to sustain that during the course of the entire game. Uh, part of that's on us and a large part of that is Ohio State. Uh, Coach, over here on your right. Uh, just how, how tough is it when you have that seven-point lead going into the break and then the Buckeyes just come out and start punching you a little bit in the mouth, give you, giving themselves a little momentum? How tough is that when you had a, a seven-point lead and you guys were feeling it going into the break? Well, I think it's you know a tough 15 team in the country. That's what you do. You expect that. So you know, the expectation was they were going to go and run the second half, and they did. Um, you know, I felt like we were constantly in a one- and two-possession game despite the run that went on, including at the end when we had a few steals. and. We had some threes rim out or, you know, potentially a different outcome. But, um, you know, you expect that in an environment like this with a, with a, such a high-level team as Ohio State. It would have been when they went up nine, maybe kind of easy for these guys to say we played hard, but they continued to fight. Were you proud of their effort that, that they responded like that and got it back down to a one game? Yeah. Um, you know, they're used to fighting. That's what this team does. I told them, you know, that this it's one of the toughest – more tenacious teams I've been around when they want to do it. Now, we didn't sustain it, and we were undisciplined in the second half. And, you know, undisciplined teams are coached by undisciplined coaches, so we're not going to be undisciplined, okay? So if we're going to be undisciplined, it's going to be an early season undisciplined. We're going to get that fixed. And I just thought we were undisciplined defensively in the second half. And, again, large part of that, give Ohio State credit, they put us in some different positions. How difficult was it to maintain a flow offensively with the amount of fouls that were called tonight? Yeah, whether it was the fouls or just the early season, it was very difficult to get a flow. And, um, you know, we, I, I knew where we were at offensively. We're, we're not there yet. And, uh, you know, offensive basketball takes time and details. And we, we, we now have tape to show that we need to be a little more detailed in practice, a little more attentive to the, uh, the synergy that it takes to, to, to play offensive basketball. And uh, uh, I knew we weren't there yet. So I knew we'd have to win with defensive rebounding. John, uh, you said yesterday you talked about seeing those little things that told you that they're getting it. Were you able to see some of those things that you saw the progress that, that these guys are kind of getting into your system? Not so much in the system, no. Not tonight, I don't think. I'll see it on tape. Uh, you know, what I saw is some guys that, you know, know how to win, know how to compete, know how to play hard, and um, need a better understanding of what we're doing. How, how long does that take? Or do you Oof. know? Golly, if I knew, I probably wouldn't do this. I'd get in consulting, and teams would bring me in and have me give them answers. I have no idea. Uh, you know, you get some older guys, so it's, it's going to take some time. Our schedule doesn't really allow a whole lot of time. Now that you've got this first one under your belt, I know you're not an overly emotional guy when it comes to basketball. But being in this facility, having your family here, what was it like coaching UC Bearcats for the first time? Oh, it's a great honor. I mean, it's, listen, to, to walk out in this facility, to get a chance to compete against Ohio State and UC on national TV, is um, it's why you do it. It's why our kids sign at University of Cincinnati. And certainly, uh, you know, I enjoyed leading this program and felt like we were in a position to, to win the game and compete and uh, weren't able to finish it. <coughs> Chris Holtman said yesterday he felt you guys might be better prepared for them than they would be for you because there's more film on, on some of their guys and how they play. D did Ohio State look like what you thought they might as, as you studied some of their film from last year? And, and how did Caleb Wesson maybe look different? Obviously, he's got a different body type this year. Well, I just think this is really hard, these early season games, because you know, it's funny. I saw Chris's comments with that, and, and I, I, I should have texted him and said, I have no idea what, what we have either. So um, we're, we're kind of we're together on that. Um, every and, and I think every coach will tell you this, and it's true. Every team is different. Every team is new. So the team that they had last year is different than the team they have this year. So to be able to gain a whole lot from that is hard. I think Caleb's taking his game to a whole other level. And uh, he's, a, he's an unbelievable difficult matchup. He's in a system with a coaching staff that knows how to utilize that talent. And um, they're going to be a tough out. This, they're scratching the surface, as, as I think we are. 
I heard a guy behind me say uh, in the crowd, he was just waiting for Jaron Cumberland to take over the game. Um, how much do you want to see him flip that switch and be the leader in offense, or in your system, is it, you know, everyone does their part and it just all falls into place? Or are you waiting for Jaron to break out and well, you know, own that game? I think for Jaron, he's just got to get in shape right now. I mean, he just was off for so long. You know, we're still not in the shape we need to be in. Um, uh, super competitive, super talented, makes the game easier for others, makes the right decision more times than not. Took some tough shots tonight, makes the right decisions more times than not. Uh, just going to have to have the practice. Pra practice gets it there, and players don't like to hear that. But the bottom line is you, the practices will enable you to have success in the games. And, uh, you know, him and I are learning each other right now because it's the first time I've had the opportunity to go on a stage like this and compete with them. John, uh, speaking yesterday, Coach Holman wasn't sure if this is something that's going to continue beyond this season. And obviously, you weren't there when this was put together. Is this kind of a neat tradition? You guys could start the year off playing each other <laughs> on a sporadic basis or an annual yeah, basis? I, I, I think it's a great rivalry. I think I'd love to play it. I'm not sure we're going to do it the first game of the year. Um, I, I think Chris would probably second that. Um, that's, you know, it's a tough challenge to do the first game of the year. Chris picked up. Vote picked up two fouls early, and you, you left Jay Sorolla in there for a long time in the first half. Uh, how proud of you were the effort he gave without picking up that fourth foul? Oh, that early. was awesome. I mean, our big guys picked up a lot of fouls early, and uh, a lot of fouls late. I thought it was really impressive uh, what Jay was able to do to sustain uh, the effort on an All-American, uh, uh, really to really put us in position to, to have a lead. And, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. Bottom line is we, we can't go 14 for 23 from the free throw line and 4 of 21. But offensive basketball is rhythmic, okay? It's, it's rhythm, and we just, we're not there yet from a rhythm standpoint. So I thought what Jay brought us was a defensive tenacity and toughness that able us to build the lead in the first half. And uh, that's why he's here. Obviously, the loss is worst case scenario, but hanging with the top 20 team on the road to start the season, does that maybe give you guys a sign you're pointed in the right direction as you, you know, head into the, the regular season? You know, I honestly can't say. Uh, I don't know who, who did the rankings, media, coaches. Um, I feel like when we were out there, we were a better team. Um, that's just how I feel. We didn't execute like we should have in the second half. We didn't bring our emotional, mental, and physical investments. So I think that's where we slipped up. And Ohio, Ohio State is a good team. They they made the plays. They hit us with a punch. And we, were, we weren't ready for it. So we got to do better next time. Do you get the feeling those teams, you know, you practice against each other, especially with the new system? Feel like you're getting comfortable in there. That you just kind of felt like you knew how it was supposed to go and what you were doing. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I feel like everybody was comfortable. Um, I can only speak for myself right now because right. we haven't had too much time to talk after the game. But um, regardless, we're going to keep on getting better. You know, we're going to get better with, from this game. We're going to watch film, on to practice, and just go from there. And keep getting better. Did you learn anything from your coach in this first game because you haven't played for him in a mm -hmm. game before? Is there anything that, that Stuck out about Coach Brandon? Uh, the biggest thing that just stuck out was his preparation before the game, and it kind of you know leads over into the game. So all we gotta do is execute. He does a, a good job of making sure that we're prepared to play and prepared for whatever they're gonna throw at us. Yeah, when the game time comes, it's only so much you can do. It didn't seem like there was no coach throwing, nothing like that. Huh, no, so he, 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 he explained to us that he's not that type of coach. When the um, you know in practice, he's gonna make sure we're prepared. And in the games, that's our time to kind of shine and show, showcase our abilities and execute whatever he has for us to do.